In this lesson, I wanted to review the constructs available for our management hierarchy. Remember at the top, we have our Azure AD instance. So for our particular company, we have an instance of Azure Active Directory. And that may be synchronized from on-premises Active Directory using Azure AD Connect to Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. But I have my users, groups, maybe machine objects in my Azure AD. Then from a governance and management perspective, well, under the Azure AD, we have the idea of a root management group that's tied directly to our Azure AD instance. Now, under that root management group, I can then create my own hierarchy of management groups. And so I'm thinking here about my management groups. And these can be not including the root. So there's kind of a, a management group here, here. I have all these management groups forming the hierarchy. This can be up to six levels. So I can have an additional six levels of management groups. Then under the management group, I'm gonna have subscriptions. So we'll have multiple subscription. So this could be subscription one. And then within our subscriptions, what we can then create are resource groups. So this could be resource group one. I could have a resource group two, resource group three, etc. A subscription, I cannot nest subscriptions in other subscriptions. I cannot nest resource groups in resource groups. So it's a very flat structure there. And then obviously our resources go into a resource group. This could be multiple virtual machines. It could be storage accounts. It could be disks, whatever I need those to be. And remember, we think about putting things in the same resource group that share a common life cycle. They're part of the same service. They're gonna get created together, run together, ultimately get decommissioned together. And the key point in what we can do with these management group, subscriptions and resource groups is really about three key types of management and governance. So the first one we're really gonna focus on, remember, is policy. So with policy, it's the ability to create those guardrails. Now those guardrails can be used to block, i.e. stop something if it goes against the rules we define. I can audit, so we let it happen, but we'll then track that, that's good for compliance, or we might remediate. Hey, the tag is missing, we're going to copy it from the subscription or the resource group. So the whole point of the policy is we have these really rules and then actions, and we assign these at a scope. So our scope, remember, well, it can be at management groups, it can be at subscriptions, it can be at resource groups. For all of these things we're gonna talk about, one of the key points is we get inheritance. So if I set a policy or anything else we talk about at a management group, hey, it'll get inherited by the child management groups, by the child subscriptions, by the child resource groups, by the resources within the resource groups. So we tend to think of, we set things at high levels that are fairly broad and generic. We have to apply to the whole company and then get more specific as we get closer to the resources. Then the next type of thing we can deploy is role-based access control. Remember, role-based access control is about role assignment. A security principle from our Azure AD, user, group, service principle, managed identity for an Azure resource, gets assigned a certain role. So I have an identity is given a role at a certain scope. And once again, hey, that scope can be management groups, subscriptions, resource groups. So we have those same constructs available that I can use for role-based access control as well. And then finally, we have the idea of budget. 
So I can set a certain dollar amount and then a threshold of that dollar amount. Now that dollar amount could be done in terms of actual use, I, I'm at 80% of my budget, or it can be based on forecast. If I carry on the trend that I'm doing, hey, I'm gonna hit 120% of my budget. And I can assign the budgets, you guessed it, management groups, subscriptions, and resource groups. So those three constructs, the management group, the subscription, the resource group, I can use for those key policy, role-based access control, and budget governance constructs. And we think about, again, you're more generic at the top. I don't wanna to be too specific or be too many permissions at the high level, because all of these get inherited down or in a budget it gets rolled up, depending on where I sign it for all of the child resources, and then I get more specific as I get closer and closer to the resource. So those are the key constructs we think about for our management hierarchy.